Hello everyone, my name is Vox. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the updated GPD Win 4. This is their 7840U version. The white version that I had was the 6800U version, and there are a few different changes that have been made. Also, they're on production GPD Win 4 6800U devices that weren't on my production. We'll touch on those in a few different sections, most specifically in the build quality part of this review. The biggest change that came with the Win 4 7840U is the addition of the Oculink port, which we can see right over here. Let's get a close-up of that. So there you can see the Oculink port. And this is basically just extending the PCIe lanes over a cable. GPD also sells their own device and own, their own eGPU solution called the GPD G1, which has the AMD 7600M XT. I've already done a few different reviews for that, so if you're interested, you can check the videos for that. Largely, the only difference there is Oculink and the inclusion of AMD's latest processor, their 7840U, over the 6800U. Now, there isn't really a gigantic performance difference here between 6800U and 7840U. So if you already own a 6800U device, I don't care what device it is, there isn't a large reason that you want to go switch over because realistically, all you're looking at is anywhere from 10 to 30% of a performance improvement per watt. And we are only speaking from where drivers are right now. It needs to be said that AMD doesn't even have official drivers for any 7840U device as it is right now. We're only looking at uh, preview stuff. Uh, before we get into the benchmark section of it, I'm trying to give this as a more narrow look at the 7840U. This is basically an update on my Win 4 review. The only thing that's changed is the chipset and the Oculink port. So there's not a whole bunch that's really changing here, but I'm going to cover all the different changes that have changed from my initial review, and we'll talk about that right now. The thing that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in is that I had the GPU Max 2 7840U for a few months now, or a month and change, and this device on 7840U was performing better than a lot of 7840U devices. A lot of people felt that that was like a magic device, uh, it turns out that the GPD Win 4 7840U is performing exactly the same. So as it stands right now, GPD is making the best 7840U devices. So if you wanted to get 7840U, I would encourage you to get any of GPD's devices. They're going to have the Win Max 2, the Win 4, or the upcoming GPD Win Mini. I'll be reviewing the GPD Win Mini as that comes along. But right now, performance-wise, it is performing in line with expectations insofar as being 10 to 30% better performance per watt over 6800U. So we're going to cover that in bigger detail in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the tech specs that are on the GPU Win 4 7840U. Let's get into it. From a high level view, the types of chips that are available on the GPU Win 4 are the 7840U and the 7640U. Now, the 7640U, I do not have that, but from what I have had submitted to me, the 7640U is uh, underperforms at every wattage compared to the 7840U. So even though we have less cores, you'd figure that there was less cores that the power spend at lower TDP would be better, but so far, all the information that I've been receiving, it doesn't indicate that that's the case. I don't have it myself, so I can really, really comment it on it other than what I've seen, but right now, don't anticipate 7640U performing better at lower TDPs. Pretty much performs worse across every TDP. On top of that, we have three different RAM configurations. We have 16 gig, 32 gig, and 64 gig. This is using the latest available LPDDR RAM, 7,500 mega transfers a second. Now, for what it's worth, there are companies that are limiting this to 6,400 mega transfers a second. On GPD, you have that option to go to 6,400 mega transfers. As it is, uh, my unit's been very stable at 7,500 mega transfers a second. All of my GPD G1, the AMD 7600 MXT, uh, eGPU performance stuff that I've been showing off has been running 7,500 mega transfers. So I have been doing nothing but running this at that. I have long tests running at 35 watt testing thermals as well as internal and external and running at 90 minutes, no problem, no crashes, totally stable. So from my point of view, it's working great. The reason that I bring this up is that 7840, AMD 7048U platform is rough right now. And this isn't G GB's fault, it's not IS fault, it's not even Asus's fault with the Ally with their Z1. Right now, it's just a weird position. There still is no official drivers that we have for it. So we're kind of like kind of working through it as it's, we're discovering everything. So I can only report on what's going on right now. As it is right now, all of GPD 784U devices are performing the best out of all the devices that I've tested. Last, we have different storage configurations, 512, 2 terabyte, and 4 terabyte. Now that we've gotten high level specs and price out of the way, let's take a little bit of a deeper look at what each one of those specs actually means. Let's first start talking about the display. So now the display on the GPD Win 4 is a little bit special. And for people that may or may not be aware, GPD is actually rotating the display via hardware so that it is presented to all operating systems and everything that it is a landscape panel. When they did this originally, there was a little bit of a bug in there that 60 hertz, running at 60 hertz, you would have a ghost frame, a frame that did not update. It would be a stale frame 
it would wait for one frame to pass 16.6 milliseconds, and then it would start feeding the frames again. What would happen is, is that this would basically be presented as a stutter. It was hard to detect. You really needed high contrasting parallax scenes to actually see it happen. I'm pleased to report that this has all been solved by GPD, and in fact, all 74U devices have this, and by presenting this screen with you, you can see that it is a clean motion that you can see happening here. So looking at high frame rate capture and high contrast parallax screen, I can confirm just like it did after the fix for the GP1 4 that all these screens are fixed. On top of that, you have a 60 hertz mode and a 45 hertz mode available to you by default. You can add additional frequencies to that, but that is something that you'll have to do outside of this. By default, this is all any particular operating would see, whether it be Linux or Windows. You're gonna see 60 hertz or 45 hertz available to it. The reason why we want it to be a landscape screen, for, especially for Windows PC gaming handhelds, is that for older games that are gonna be DirectX 8 or older are going to have problems and fail to launch when they try to actually render onto a portrait-based display. You can wrap this in software, and I've covered this multiple times on my channel previously, but having this landscape screen or a screen that is presented as native landscape, what you're gonna have is just a much smoother Windows PC gaming experience. So overall, I'm very happy with the solution that GPD did, although they stumbled along the way. It is fixed now. That is one of the bigger benefits of having a GPD Win 4 or GPD Win X2, which actually does have a land native landscape panel. It is not actually being rotated anywhere else. Next up is the Oculink interface itself. And this is actually a pretty simple port. It's just a standard port that exposes four PCI lanes that can go over a cable or a wire to another particular device. GPD completes this entire suite by having their GPD G1. So you can have an external GPU that has more power. So if you wanted to play something that needed more power, you can do that on an external monitor in a very easy way and be able to capture that power in a better way outside of Thunderbolt. Next up on the list that GPD likes to talk about is their PC grade large turbo fan. Their thermal solution on the GPD Win 4 is truly excellent. I'm gonna show you a graph here. What you're looking at is a 35 watt load for 90 minutes. That means that I am pressing on the system for 90 minutes, demanding it to use 35 watts of power. Now, while it's doing that, at no point in time does it ever go over 70 degrees Celsius. This is crazy impressive for a stock heatsink and fan on a device that is so outrageously small. This is a device that has a six inch display. So being able to handle 35 watts with ease internally is truly impressive. GPD does deserve kudos here. When I first showed off the GPD Win 4, I actually had a 45 watt load. It handles that as well, but it's around 80 to 85 degrees Celsius. That's still crazy impressive. Anyway, that is something that I think that they deserve a lot of praise for, and they did an excellent job. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the 3D Alp sticks. These analog sticks are on the GPD Win 4. They are not the best, they're not, they're good. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the places where they fail, especially because it's not like GPD can't do it because GPD has superior sticks on their GPD Win Max 2. So they already have better stuff on here. But we're going to talk about everything that GPD does because for what they do, they do a good job in a lot of different respects. And I also want to kind of address that people always bring up the circularity thing from that one particular test. Circularity, having it be a perfect circle is not something that is ideally or ideal or good. I want to make it a point here that both an Xbox Series controller goes over that circle. Having something that has a square output is far better. And the Steam Deck does it as well. So I will be showing that circularity test, but more to the point that we want to go past that range, we don't want to just be within that circle. We actually want to go past it because there are some games that anticipate going past it. And if you don't, you're going to have a character that when you're pushing diagonally will only walk. So it's important that GPD does this right and they do do it right. Now, the one thing that I want to point out here that a lot of people are bringing up and I do, I commiserate with them is that the GPD Win 4 has a, a large dead zone from the center. Basically, when you push in ever so slightly, what you're going to do is you're going to hit basically 20% of where the analog will start to accept an input. So even though you're pushing only a little bit, what's, wind, what really, what's really happening is that what you're seeing is that it's just jutting out to basically 0.2. If the maximum range that an analog can have is 1, we start at 0.2 on these Alps-based sticks. Be aware that because potentiometer-based analog sticks have a potential to drift, you do want to have some dead zone on those sticks. So I can commiserate from GPD's point of view that they want to minimize any customer support uh, for people saying that they have drifting sticks. And then they also want to um, help the people, satisfy the people that don't care and they want to override that setting. Outside of that one particular area, 
the GPU Win 4 analog sticks do excel in terms of just general fidelity. If we try to just move around and take a look, it has better range, more full range going outside of that circle. But more to the point, even just finessing it, there is no cardinal magnetism. There is no cardinal assistance where you will kind of snap to the rails of the cardinal directions. You can freely float through them. It feels really nice. Nothing feels like it's kind of guiding or, or sticking to any particular direction. Everything that's on GPD's WinMax 2 hull based analog sticks are superior to the GPD Win 4. So it is a bit of a pain to see that these analog sticks aren't as good as products that GPD already produces. So in that respect, the analog sticks are just okay. They're good. They're not terrible. And with regards to the dead zones, you have to kind of understand from GPD's point of view that they want to minimize anyone complaining about drifting. Hopefully they do provide the software so that we can remove that dead zone for people that actually really want that. The next thing I want to talk about is that all GPD devices since the GPD Win Max 1, they featured a Vita-like D-pad. And this has been my favorite D-pad to ever be on any portable device. I love this D-pad. So when I asked GPD if they can make something that's very similar to it, they obliged. The one thing that I want to make note of is that my prototype that I had of my GPD Win 4 had a pivot point that is very close to a PS Vita or closer to a PS Vita in that if you were to press directly in the center, it won't press all the buttons. It's kind of stiff. Whereas on the updated GPU Win 4, you can, if you press in the center, it'll kind of just depress and press all four of the buttons. You can actually hear it right here. So the weird thing is, I don't know why GPD made this choice, but it, when we take a look at what's being reported, not all bu four buttons are being pressed. I believe that this has also been an updated change to the game controller former that not all four buttons will be able to be pressed at one go. Overall, I played with it for a bit and it's a little bit looser. I'm still fine with it overall. I still think it's a fantastic D-pad. I just don't know why they made this particular change at all. I just wanted to kind of address that because I noticed that a lot of people who had talked to me about it, it just feels like a very, very loose Vita D-pad now. It's not bad. It just takes me a little bit to get used to. I much, much prefer having a stiffer D-pad or something that is a little bit more stiff than what it is right now. It should be closer to an actual PS Vita D-pad. At this point, I want to take a little bit of a deeper dive and take a look at the 7840U's performance, and more specifically, how GPD seems to be the only ones making the best 7840U's. So let's start talking about the benchmarks now. All right, the focus on the benchmarks in this video is just to briefly get you up to date. I've done far more in-depth reviews on the 7840U in previous videos, so please go ahead and check that out. But this will get you up to speed really quick here. We're going to be taking a look at the GPU N4 7840U, which you can see right here, but we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of different TDB slices. The game that we're looking at is Batman Arkham Knight. This is a 720p max settings, no NVIDIA game works. Now, if we take a look at here very briefly, if we take a look at uh, 5 watt, we can see that the 7840U is around 25% better. If we take a look at 10 watt versus 7840U, 7840U is performing around 19% better. If we take a look at 15 watt, you can see that there's a bit of a jump here, but effectively we're 15% better in terms of 15 watt versus 15 watt. And then if we take a look at 20 watt, we're again looking at 24% better. And then if we take a look at 15 watt, we're around 21% better. Okay, now I'm addressing the people that already have 6800U devices. And to those people, what I want to say is that if you were asking me what the question is, is what type of performance expectations should you get from going to a 7840U device? The bottom line is that you should be looking at anywhere from a 10% to up to a 30% performance increase over the 6800U at the same TDP wattages. So if you're five watt to five watt, anywhere from 10% to 30%, depending on the game, is where you should anticipate it. Is that really all that great? It isn't. So if you already have a 6800U device, I don't think that this is a worthwhile upgrade for you to consider going to. Instead, I would think about any other features or functionality or even the form factor of the device before you even consider doing anything else. There is a little bit that I want to touch voice on more, so I'm going to jump back into the benchmarks real quick. Okay, let's get up to speed real quick. A lot of people have noted that my WinMax 2 7840U is outperforming a lot of other 7840U devices and has been deemed like a magic device. So if we take a look at these 5 watt slices, you can see that my WinMax 2 is around 14% better. If we take a look at the 10 watt slice, you can see that it's still 11% better. 15 watt slice, we're looking at 13% better. So you get the idea that my GPU WinMax 2 7840U is somehow magical in some respects. So it's outperforming other 7840U devices, even though there shouldn't be any difference. 7840U to 7840U, depending, as long as you can thermally make sure everything's okay, they should perform the same, right? So what happens when we take a look at Win 4 versus my GPU WinMax 2? Okay, so here we are taking a look at my Win 4 7840U versus my WinMax 7840U. And we take a look and we're pretty much even on 5 watt. I have about 10 watt. 
averages are exactly the same. What about 15 watt? Uh, averages 1% better on my WinMax 274U. 20 watt? Uh, we got 1% better on my 7840U Win 4. What about 25 watt? Uh, it's exactly even. So what we're looking at here is that my GPD Win 4 is actually performing the same as my WinMax 2 7840U. So the only thing that I know at the moment is GPD making 7840U devices is the only manufacturer currently, based on all the drivers and all the other BIOS and whatever that's available right now, that is making 7840U devices in line with our expectations. And our expectations is 10 to 30% better performance per watt per game, depending, which isn't great as it is. It's not like it's monumental, but right now, GPD is the only one that I have been able to benchmark where I'm actually getting that, those results. To prove that, I'm also going to show you a 10 watt result running in real time, just so you can see side by side how they actually work. This benchmark is 90 seconds long. Uh, and also when I was recording the GP Win Max 2, when it got to the finish screen, I didn't pick it up and highlight the average FPS that you're going to see on the camera. So I have to cut to that after it's already there. So it will show that the difference between like what 47, 46 and 48 FPS average. What we're looking at there is that effectively based on the run, they are within margin of error, exactly the same unit. And in fact, when we go back to the benchmarks for the GP Win Max 2 at 10 watt that I have here, I'm getting 46.7 average FPS and 46.6 average FPS on my Win 4. Again, for each one of these systems that I do, every one of them is the latest version of Windows 11 22H2. Because 7840U doesn't have official drivers right now, I have to use different preview drivers that are available for all the different manufacturers. So hopefully that is the thing that is the difference here. The other thing here is that I am running EPP60. I am running efficient, aggressive profile. For the default clock rate, 7840U wants the default clock rate at 4 gigahertz. I change that manually to the default, the default setting that Windows wants to do. Memory integrity is already off on all of these devices. Game works, game mode, Windows game mode is off. Uh, that is my baseline setting. So when I do these settings, that's the type of stuff that you should expect. This is, everything is as baseline as I possibly can get, yet I am showing these differences. So I just wanted to kind of briefly summarize this right now, that GPD is making the best 7840U devices. And by best, what I mean is that they're doing exactly what they should be doing. GPD has done a fantastic job in making one of the smallest high-performance handheld gaming PCs to date. Not only have they gone above and beyond and trying to use that IC to correct the panel from being portrait to landscape so that playing older PC games is easy and not have any problems for the user so they can just go ahead and get playing. Not only that, because they continue to have keyboard and a mouse, you can see this little optical trackpad sensor here. So you'll always have an additional mouse and keyboard always available to the user at all times. They also have this little switch here on the side that has been in there since the GPD Win 1. So you can go from mouse mode to gamepad mode or X input mode. And what's nice is even with mouse mode, you can actually, with GPD's own tool, configure what the D-pad and the buttons are and actually have them correspond to something that old PC games require. So like left shift, left control, left all, Z, X, C, F, those type of keys, actual cursor keys, mapping them to your D-pad. So you can go ahead and play older PC games like Commander Keen directly on the device without having to worry about any joy to key or any nonsense like that. It's so simple to play. And because the right analog stick is always a mouse, playing these old PC games feels completely natural. Not only that, because we have a keyboard here and GPD always makes a keyboard on all their devices, you can even play old text-based adventure games. Now, I realize that the amount, the population of buying these PCs to play old text-based adventure games is very, very small. But overall, I think the idea that GPD is the only company that is making a device that is usable as a PC. You could use this device as a PC and not play games. I realize that people like having a candy bar form factor when they're playing games for whatever reason. And when they see a keyboard, they become extremely allergic to it. But having all of these features and functionalities is a requirement for especially for windows windows is not is pretty hostile to a candy bar style form factor you're using touch often if you need to escape from a game you really can't so there's a lot of things that there's software that you have to put in front of it to try to help you through those situations this is why steam os is so much better uh, as a user experience because they do all these things to kind of help the user not needing any of the keyboards and mice that you need so also steam deck has trackpads as well that operate as a mouse so I, it's just something that I really wanted to highlight here that if you were looking for a Windows PC gaming handheld, GPD makes some of the best devices. Not only 
do they make the best performing 784U devices. They make devices that are made for Windows PC gaming in general. Not even handhelds, just PC gaming. So I'm a big fan of their devices. Their 7840U is fantastic. It is an iteration, uh, along with the uh, inclusion of Oculink and then that whole suite of products, having it all work together. GPD is banging it on all cylinders. They did a fantastic job on the 7840U. I think the only thing that I could say that I wish that GPD did is that they would really consider putting hall-based analog sticks on the GPU M4 because having the Alpspace sticks on there, especially when the GPU Max 2 already has fantastic hall-based analog sticks, that's the only thing that I could say is a clear miss on the GPD M4. So for me, there's like a, a bit to talk about here because the PC gaming handheld space is so saturated at the moment. Why would you get a GPU M4, especially a 7840U? If you already have the 6800U version, largely, I don't think that there's a big reason to do it, especially because now there's a software fix to fix the screen. Um, there's not a substantial reason that you want to go over there. If you don't yet have a 6800U device at all, the 7840U version of the GPU N4, it is a refinement on the 6800U all around. It is a fantastic device. Me personally, I would actually wait for the GPU N Mini. That's going to be a better typing experience. It's going to have a 7-inch screen, and it's going to be smaller than the GPU N4 actually is in general dimensions. So uh, bigger screen, smaller overall dimensions, better typing experience. That's just win-win-win. So for me, uh, the GPD Win Mini that's coming is going to be the true king of portable Windows gaming-based PCs. So I'm looking forward to that. However, if you're just keen on the form factor and look of the GPD Win 4, I can't blame you. It's a, it's a real looker. That is my review on the GPD Win 4. I hope this has been informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.